In previous sections of this course, we've looked at how we can calculate whether a rigid body is in equilibrium. So, for example, we have a rigid body like this, and maybe we have some system of forces on this body, and we check by taking moments and from a location, let's call this location A, maybe take a moment about A, some of the forces in the Y direction, some of the forces in the X direction, and check whether this body would be in equilibrium with the forces subject to it. In the most recent section of the course, we've then gone on to look at centroids, and we had a body like so, and we said, if we've got a nice rectangular body that we know that this is half of the breadth and half of the height to get up to the location of the centroid. Likewise, we spoke about triangles. And then we went a little bit further to say, if I had a mathematically described body, could I calculate where the position of the centroid is for this body? Now this is very useful mathematical information, but in this video we're gonna go on and use this information we have to handle distributed loading on bodies. So getting away from just point loads and using the information from centroids to handle distributed loading. So we're gonna introduce a relatively simple scenario where we have a simply supported beam, so it's pin supported on the left hand side at position A, so we have potential Y reaction RAY, potential X reaction RAX, and because we have a roller at B, we have just a vertical reaction RBY. But now instead of point loads, we now have a distributed loading. In this case, the loading is what we call uniformly distributed loading. Uniformly distributed loading. And we sometimes abbreviate this to UDL so we don't have to write out in full. And so here we've called it W. But W, so little w, and for the example we're going to do, is going to be 5 kilonewtons per meter. And by per meter, we mean per meter as we move along the beam. And we call it uniformly distributed because it's a constant amplitude all the way along. We'll go on to look at cases where we don't have a constant amplitude later. But let's see how we can use the knowledge from centroids to work out what the reaction forces are on this beam. So first up, let's put some data into our problem. Let's say that our length is equal to eight meters and that the intensity of this uniformly distributed loading is five kilonewtons per meter. So we'll find out what the total magnitude of the load coming from this UDL is. So magnitude of the loading. So we have, we can imagine that the total load, and I'm going to use a capital W, equals the load intensity little w multiplied by the total length over which this is applied, in which case this is the full length of the beam. So we have an intensity, and that's five kilonewtons per meter, multiplied by a length of eight meters, so meters, meters, gives us a total loading of 40 kilonewtons. Now we're going to use the knowledge that we have of this, of where this load would act. And so we use the centroid of the loading to help us determine this. And the centroid of the loading 
because we have a uniform load distribution this is what we could consider to be rectangular so uniform and therefore our x bar would be equal to l upon 2 which equals 4 meters so we can get all of this loading here 5 kilonewtons per meter and assume it to be one big point load of 40 kilonewtons we're going to redraw that neatly now and using this point load we can now go on to calculate our reactions so as usual with statics problems we need to draw the free body diagram to calculate the reactions we always use the free body diagram of the entire body so we have R A Y R A X R B Y and finally now we've got our big load W which we've converted from our uniformly distributed load and to complete our free body diagram we add some dimensions and so we have L upon 2 and L upon 2 and now we can proceed like we've done in previous section course on rigid body equilibrium to calculate the reactions and we'll do that here so let's do equilibrium calculations So we have some of the forces in the x direction, we get R A X equals zero. Some of the forces in the y direction, and now we have pointing upwards R A Y plus R B Y minus W equals zero. And let's take moments about somewhere. I'm going to take moments about point A. So the left hand side of the beam. Let's take moments about A. I have R B Y multiplied by the lever arm, which is L, going in the anti clockwise direction and going in the clock direction. I have W multiplied by L upon 2. So minus. W multiplied by L upon 2, that's all equal to 0. Now I'm going to substitute for the known values. So R, B, Y multiplied by the full length of the beam, 8 meters. And I'll take this minus, so I'll take this whole term over to the right hand side. So equals 40, which was the total load W, multiplied by L upon 2, which is 4 meters. And so I'll rearrange the equation in terms of R, B, Y. And I'll get for R, B, Y equals 20 kilonewtons. And finally, just to complete the problem, I'll do from our sum of the forces in the Y direction equation, I'll get the so R A Y plus R B Y must be equal to 40. And I know that R B Y was 20 from above. And that gets me that R A Y equals 20 kilonewtons. So going from knowing the distribution of the loading we could calculate the total load by multiplying by the length we could evaluate where this loading should act based on the centroid of the loading we condense the load down to a point load and then apply that and use the use in our free body diagram and apply the usual equations of equilibrium to get the reaction forces.